This project began with me drawing on one face of the block uh, the chicken I wanted to sculpt, which was a cartoony type. Um, I'll explain l a bit later, but I think drawing it on only one side ended up being a problem. Here the sign passed by real quick, that's because uh, when I was sawing uh, on the table, the uh, camera being mounted on the same one, on the, sa on the table itself, uh, there was a very large amount of shaking that uh, would have been nauseous uh, in uh, Accelerated. For most of the video here, you're going to be seeing me experimenting with different knives. Uh, because uh, this was the first time I used this set of knives. So uh, I was trying to figure out what technique worked for me, what uh, move I was supposed to use to remove wood the way I wanted to. Uh, you will also notice that I'm not really on frame for basically all of the video. Uh, when I first set up the camera, I didn't know... I since I wasn't go using the knives when I set up the camera, I badly guessed where my uh, natural carving position would end up, which uh, made it impractical. But I and eventually will notice and move the camera's orientation to better fit it. Here you can see that the technique I ended up using most of the time was a kind of shearing motion uh, I found while trying to carve that using my fingers or the side of the block or any other geometry I might have made whilst carving made it so I had to spend a bit less effort when trying to do remove the wood here I'm able to push because I have a corner I, I can do just one straight movement but in most other cases the um, there's not enough leverage, there's not uh, enough catch with uh, without a proper corner to try to cut. So um, later I'm going to try to uh, do different things. And this catching of the knife is the main reason I have to believe that drawing on only one face of the block what I wanted it to become was a mistake. Because... Uh, had I drawn the outline of what I wanted more roughly on every side of the block, I probably could have torn down all of the corners, which would have given me a more basic shape, a more um, a rough shape that is close to what I wanted to do, somewhat, and it would have. It would have given me more corners to then do the proper curves on the sides and on the back. Because here you can see me struggling for a fairly long time trying to get the curve of the back right. But the knives can't really reach far enough within the block for it to be the way I want it to be. And then when I started doing the sides, I think the already rough, roughed up surface of the back became a hindrance when trying to do the sides. So I think a approach right by doing most of the corn big corner work at once and then trying to go to the center rather than doing the whole slice through at this first at first probably would have been easier and faster on the long run. But this is not what I chose to do this time because I didn't think of it. I decided to wear a glove on only one of my hand because uh, at first within the video, we there's a few minutes maybe where you can see me wear both gloves. Uh, that because I, when I started to use the knife, I noticed that um, the hand holding the knife was pretty safe. Like you can see my fingers there, my finger there uh, on uh, that rests on the wood of block to give me a bit of leverage with the hand holding the knife. But it 
doesn't appear that way with the angle of view we have, but that hand is... I, I never feel that that finger is really at risk. It's uh, much lower than where the blade will end up, and that the and the part that holds the knife is far enough that uh, it felt safe, so I just removed that glove to uh, have a better hold of the knife, uh, because I, I felt it... It wasn't slipping, but it didn't feel safe to hold it with a glove. The wearing the glove on the other hand was necessary, the one holding the block of wood, because those moments have been removed from uh, the film, but I could have cut my hand a few times there. Uh, some minor slippage, the block falling off my hand a few times. Here you've seen me using a rather brutal knife to uh, c gouge a part of it, of the block of wood. This gave me a corner that I could use temporarily, but I couldn't really repeat the thing. It was like mostly a one-time try. After that, the knife slipped too much, and it wasn't practical to try to keep on going that way. It was good or the knife to kind of plunge a bit into the back. It f that was a very short period, but uh, later I try using the same technique, and uh, you can see it, it removes small bits, but uh, it was one of the knife that was the best at uh, removing the central part of the back, for at least now. Doing this, I tried to do use the knife in different directions because I, I knew that there was a sense of the grain to worry about when trying to... Uh, the direction of the grain that uh, I had to worry about when I was trying to carve. But uh, I wanted to feel the difference, so I, every now and then I, I went back to trying to do against the grain, so to speak, which... Um, was a lot harder, but it allowed me to make dents that became easier to attack a bit later on, and so it's it was not wasted. It's I have, I think mostly when we were going to be making the belly of the chicken that uh, I probably should have not done it as much because uh, it ended up I think making a. Um, We'll see then, but it made a really bossed and smooth-ish surface that was really hard to uh, try to take parts out of later. After a while, I started to get the hang of it. That it's uh, we see there's a few less less cuts uh, between the. Uh, I do more cuts before the knife cuts more often within in the wood before uh, there is a cut in the video. Uh, that is because I I started to get the hang of it and started to just go for it more. Uh, at the beginning, I was switching knives so often and trying different moves so often and waffling about talking between every few knife strikes that uh, it really didn't move fast. Uh, and uh, that, that's why there is a lot of cut in the beginning and a bit less cuts now. It's because I, I started getting a bit more confident with my cuts and I started explaining every little move I made a bit less, which was uh, very helpful.
one of the problem with trying to make a chicken was uh, that it's deceptively complicated. Here, trying to make the belly, it's a big curve on right on the edge of the wood where it's been really banged up by the saw that formed it uh, at the beginning. So it's a very rough surface to cut, and uh, I really struggle a lot with it in, uh, when trying to make this video. And then there's the head, which we won't see for a bit again within this video, but uh, it's the head has a lot of shapes compared to the rest of the body. The um, wattles at the top and the at the top of the head and the underneath the beak uh, made it. It was hard to portion uh, the head whilst trying to carve it so that there was room left for these geometries to be left and making the belly without going too far in order to make sure not to break the beak whilst the surface was that rough because I saw again it was a real struggle which is the main reason why I, why, why I had to uh, split uh, the carving of this chicken into two streams my hands were way too tired after uh, two hours of this um, and well there was also the fact that we are approaching midday and I well needed to eat at some point but um, the fact that my hands were so cramped at the end of it was a really the deal breaker I would have wanted to keep on going on the first day and until it was done but it was just not reasonable. Uh, it's not as obvious, even when we get to it uh, lay by the end of the first stream, which I have not. I have not really marked it within the the recording because well, I lost track while I was editing. But uh, at those points, my hand, the, the handle of the knife is really shaking when uh, when I'm taking a break. Uh, it's not really pretty. I think I said most of what I wanted to say for a lot of uh, the following video, so I think I'm going to use this time to introduce myself a bit. So, um, I'm my name on um, YouTube will be uh, Dress at the Lab. I'm not going to be. Uh, if you want to see my live stream while I stream, fine, you you can come. But uh, if you have questions, I'll try to answer them if I don't think they'll somehow dox me but um, so feel free to come if you want right now for the streams of this very uh, of this culture of the chicken I don't think it's going to be worth your time trying to watch the playback uh, it was mostly rambling uh, with poor visibility and a lot of breaks between cuts that uh, are annoying. Uh, here I'm uh, making the uh, body of the chicken, uh, the, the the sides. I'm, I'm going to start carving them uh, a bit after that to uh, hopefully get a better access to the back. Um, so yeah, so, so the stream right now they're bad to rewatch, but uh, if you want to be there when they happen you may be able to uh, have better interaction and quality there it's really agreeable right now the so uh, my goal by uh, starting this youtube channel is mostly to motivate myself to experiment with arts in general i start with wood carving because it felt 
because I already had some tools which I didn't use in this video for wood carving. They were mostly detail work tools. So uh, the s few attempts at carving I made, they were real difficult to make because it took just minuscule uh, bites out of the wood and it was painfully slow to sculpt with these tools. So I did five carvings, I think. Uh, and then I more or less gave up. But it felt bad to give up because uh, I wanted to carve uh, and do art in general. So uh, I thought to myself when I was moving, why not try to not force myself, but motivate myself to do a lot of practice. So uh, this is what this channel is. It's me documenting my practice and holding myself accountable by to, to the uh, schedule of making at least one art piece a week or maybe one practice session a week so uh, that I'm more constant and I become able to grow my abilities within the art in general. I have purchased uh, all I need to uh, start painting also, but uh, I won't do it on this uh, in this setup. Right now I'm uh, working on, I'm waiting for my, uh, I'm going to renovate part of my basement to in order to make a uh, proper workshop. Right now I'm working on in my desk uh, that I also use for work sometimes and mostly games. So I have a pretty good carpet here and I said I don't want paint to go all over and I wouldn't trust, I wouldn't trust uh, myself with water on this setup because uh, it would risk falling over when I'm trying to paint to to clean off my brush and things and when I have a more proper workshop I'm going to set up things so that all of my electronics are well clear of any place that could have splotches of water on them and so painting will have to wait until then which right now I don't really have a clear say in when exactly uh, I'll have my final workshop ready. Um, I'm hoping it will be sometimes this year, but uh, there is a lot of work to be done in the basement before I can do it, so we'll have to wait and see. It was also hard within this piece to um, sharpen properly the uh, tail i wanted it to be i wanted it to be upright and pointed and sharp but it's it was hard to not damage the point i was making while still shaping the wood around it uh, and only one carving direction seemed to properly work the way i wanted it's not um like uh, when I was trying to do from the point of the tail down in order to dig into the back and make the curve I wanted, the blade would catch and it wouldn't tear the wood off, which was a, a annoyance to see the least. So I had to like dig into it to make a, a splinter and a, just one trench on one side and then from the other side come and wipe it off by uh, also digging down, which was doable, but it was more annoying. Here I'm drawing the uh, shape of the head. I, I, I wanted where I felt like the neck and the body were separated so that I could then remove I the in between the lines. This was a fun part of the thing because it made it really started looking at chicken from that point on. Uh, the way I'm cutting here is I'm plunging my blade a bit at the line and then I'm leveraging the blade while twisting it onto the head itself. So it's a 
fun movement to make. I, I couldn't do it all the way down. At some point it started to um, splinter the wood instead of rem smoothly removing it. It was making a lot of... Uh, the fibers were separating and being annoying at that point. At some point. We can see it here a bit. And this, and every time it, the fibers split like that, it was it required a bit more fixing later by um, passing another knife and carefully removing the fiber while trying not to make m as much of a visible mark. And it was kind of a pain. I sound like I'm complaining, but I did have a lot of fun doing this. And I if you watch the live stream, you will hear me complain a lot but that's how I have fun I guess I, I don't know when I was carving the head a lot of time the um, sides of the chicken felt like they were too straight because of how low I'd uh, brought the curve of the neck so that's why you see me often go back to uh, the sides removing a few a few snippets curving it back here i'm figuring out where i want the top of the head to be the beak and where the top waddle ends up uh, and the shape of it on all orientations i could catch and i use this line to do similar the, the same kind of movement I did in. and f for the details that were thin I gouged I made deep lines in the both directions I wanted it to be removed and then if needed passed with another knife to uh, remove the big splinter and the big portion the closer I was to having a proper chicken looking carving the harder it was to um, stop sculpting to look at the project and see where I was and the more tempting it was to go until the end even though it was starting to be exhausting for the next sculpture I'm going to try to uh, make a much smaller sculpture i'm going to try to make it uh, i have two uh, formats of wood one that is two by two inches that's what i use for the chicken i thought it was reasonable because when holding the block of wood it feels small it was a bigger it was in the bigger side of affordable wood blocks but it felt small when i thought about wood carving but uh Carving this chicken, uh, I mean, I've already talked about exhaustion and tiredness in my hands and cramps and stuff. Uh, two by two inches really isn't that small, I discovered. So uh, the next sculpture will be made into one by one inch wood, which uh, will make it so that even if it starts getting exhausting, which I hope it won't because it's a smaller block of wood by a significant amount, uh, that I'll still be able to make the whole thing in one sitting because it felt bad leaving the wood, the, 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 the project partly unfinished uh, in between the streams. Yes, it was only 24 hours between the start of both streams. I both started them at nine o'clock in the morning but uh it's it was annoying the rest of the first day when i was i had mostly carved it and wasn't sure when i was going to pick it up again so i really want to make one piece per stream finished as much as possible uh, for uh, simplicity and for budgeting my time the initial plan was that in the first stream, th the first day I would do the stream, uh, Saturday I would do the stream and I uh, I would do it all. I would have one finished piece and one recorded 
video long form that I could then within the next day edit fully and publish it maybe Monday if I had trouble. But because uh, I did it in two streams, I was left with four hours of footage that was really, really long to edit. Well, of course, you can see the length that I cut because of the... Uh, the fact that I was switching knife that much and doing that much breaks in between cuts really didn't help me. It added a lot of work to the editing process from the get-go. But the fact that I had four hours to edit also didn't help. The progress was slow and annoying. And since I could only really start on Monday because I had I do have chores on the uh, on Sunday that was going to do anyway. So uh, I it didn't feel like this week was as productive channel wise as I would have liked it to. It's and I realized that I a lot less to say than I thought I would have about the process of carving this chicken. Uh, I, because s since I didn't, don't already have technique and habits on how to properly sculpt, I don't have much of a perspective on that. Uh, since this is literally my first sculpture with those tools, it, I don't feel like I have much that I can add. But the video still is 30 something minutes because I tried within the editing software to make it a bit longer but it it wasn't uh, it, it was a l way too jumpy I felt like I would have needed to put an epilepsy warning or something uh, it wasn't watchable so uh, two times I think it's two times team speed like this uh, that uh, that's manageable here I'm trying to deepen the back. It's not working well at all. It's uh, by the end there, the deeper the back was, the harder it was to properly have the knives catch the wood and remove anything. And the head was in the way of the one direction where the wood wanted to be removed from. It was hard to shape the belly underneath the beak. Uh, I was scared to break the beak, first things first, and then I I, re I wanted a big contrast between what's the beak, what's the head, and what's the body. I wanted the, ne I wanted the, ne the neck to be clear and noticeable all around, which was not easy to do here. What I end up doing is that I leverage the knife similarly to what I did with the head on the bottom of the wall, which is which was scary. I, I felt like I would break the uh, on the part underneath the beak, but uh, it it worked decently well. Uh, it made the nice dent underneath the beak that I could then use to shape the rest of the body relatively easy uh, easily compared to what the um, whole project was but still quite tough I never ended up quite satisfied with the back I never could make it as deep as I wanted it to I wanted the really nice Hyperbolic, not, not hyperbolic, but uh, a nice curved back that goes from the head, goes quite a bit down, and then goes back up. But uh, it ended up far blockier than I intended it to be. But uh, it's at some point I had to stop because uh, the more I remove, the more I risk breaking the breaking something and just going too far and making it not good anymore. But I did make a nice chicken. That's not the problem. It's just not quite as nice as I would have wanted it to be.
I'm pretty sure that now we're with within what was a part of the second stream. Here, uh, it was really the finishing touches. The the previous stream I'd done um, the basics. I done it so that it looked vaguely like a chicken. And now in the, what I believe is the second stream, I go a lot clearer. I add the proper detail on the top model. I a bit later I make the wings, uh, which was a fun process making the wings. It felt uh, really good. It was the the wings was the last detail that I was missing for it to truly look like a proper chicken. And uh, adding that detail in, which was really at the end because I didn't know how far I would be able to make the body uh, as far as the shape I wanted it to have. So I couldn't do the wings and then, oh, I f finally I want to reshape it so I would lose the wings. So I. The wings really needed to be the last thing I added. And that's also one of the things that made me stop trying to make the back deeper because, well, what if I dig too deep and then I can't do wings, which would have been fine. I could have suggested the wings and made them less, but uh, I think the way I did them really made it, made this all chicken come together really well. Here's a prime example of uh, the head being the way of me trying to deepen the back. This is one of my favorite cuts I've made. Uh, re this knife was really good for uh, this specific use in the corner that uh, it was uh, able to dig deep and take big cuts at once and it was fun to use but it's not usable in most situations I found I tried to replicate that's the problem with that knife I do it I do one good thing with it it's really nice, it feels really good, but then on the other side, the situation is a, the situation is a, a little bit different. The uh, It's not the same thing exactly, and it just doesn't work the same at all. It's, I failed to, tr to replicate the first success. Every time I've used this knife so far, I felt really good about the first attempt, and then the f second ones failed, which is knowing I think I'm going to have to practice with this knife specifically, with, but it's a really situational thing. Uh, here, I'm adding the marks for the uh, wings. The wings I did the same way I did the head. I carved a deep line on the line I made with the pencil. And then I made the different motion a bit that I did with the head. With the head, I was only twisting the knife. It doesn't appear much within the video but uh, when I was doing the wings I was pushing and twisting at the same time which helped me follow the line and project the line outwards a bit except especially near the head here where th because of, of the movement I was making the, the, the shape of the wing followed a bit more onto the back part and the sh shoulders than it would have, I think, if I just twisted it the same way I twisted the knife for the when I was making the head. In this part, I've removed a lot of uh, tiny cuts I made. Um, I was doing part of the wings, and then I would try to shape a bit more of the front uh, or shape a bit more of the back and I have kept some of it w the part where I did some actually substantial cuts but uh, I felt the video was already starting to probably be longer than I could talk for so I started to uh, rem be more extreme in what I was allowing myself to show 
with, to, to keep within this video and what I cut. So um, that's why the cuts are, I, I don't know if you can notice it here, but uh, that's why the, there, there's more progress in between cuts of within the video. That's because I'm using the knives more in between shots. One of the thing that isn't shown here is that at some point here I plug my uh, wood burning stylus to draw by uh, burning a bit of the wood uh, because I wanted to make to bring the whole thing together with the high the eyes drawn by burning them a little bit. So uh, here I'm testing the shape of the eye I want to make. And well, I just make a smiley face while I'm at it, right here. And then there's a lot of waffling that is cut, where well, here we can see me just draw the eyes, but uh, my intent was to s just start burning immediately, but I couldn't fathom doing it that way. So uh, within the stream, there's a lot of waffling trying to go for it and not doing so, but uh, here I drawn what I needed to do and just did it then. Here you see me sign this very first piece of mine with the word burning status again. I probably won't be doing this every time. This is because well I had a nice flat surface to try to sign on and well also the stylus was already eaten up but uh, for smaller pieces and or where there's no good surface to sign and when the stylus isn't need for this project, I probably won't do it. So, um, once again, if you want to watch the live streams, feel free to come and uh, hopefully you'll stick around for my next projects. Thank you very much for your attention.